What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited today to be joined in my Zoom virtual studio with actually a very good friend of mine, Sean Wells. Sean, how are you, man? Oh man, I'm great. Like this is, I've been doing so many podcasts getting ready for this book launch, but like there's always like a couple that you get just super excited about because they're friends and this is just like a conversation that I'm excited to have. Like I would be excited to talk to you on the phone or by Zoom anyway, but now this is uh, this is a podcast, so this is amazing. Thanks, man. And 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 for my longtime fans and followers, uh, Sean and I have done two podcasts already. <laughs> we probably don't even remember it so far back because he's transitioned and who he is, and of course I've transitioned and who I am. So it's an amazing time to reconnect and you know him and I have all sorts of personal stories but today's podcast is about his amazing new book which I have had the pleasure to read which is the energy formula six life-changing ingredients to unleash your limitless potential Sean is uh, a man of many talents he's been on my podcast before you know he's reinvented himself I mean he's very very well well known in the supplement space he has literally like unlimited number of patents on supplements. And it, I mean, basically if you use supplements, Sean probably has a patent on one of the supplements that you've, or two that you've used in your life. Um, but he is a biochemist, a dietitian, and of course a certified sports nutritionist, but his book is amazing. Uh, it's launching. So, you know, this is March 11th and I'm going to rush this to, to the top of my podcast queue. So hopefully this comes out like literally right when his book launches, probably the second week of April or so when he's really in circulation. But, uh, I don't read very many books again today because I'm, you know, I'm creating, but uh, they sent me an advanced copy of it and it's sensational. And I, again, I don't say that about books unless they really move me. And Sean's story is very moving. Um, you know, he's overcome what I would say, like all of us, you know, trauma and victimhood and all that stuff in his life. And he shares a lot of that in this book. Um, you know, I was very moved by what he read, wrote about with uh, your brother, uh, and I can't remember, was it, was it two of your brothers? Was it two brothers or I, I, you had one guy who died and then the other brother had a serious issue and it was all in the very recently. And so, you know, when I read books like that, it, you know, really sucked me in and stuff like that. And again, let me just say, Sean is a brilliant mind when it comes to understanding. I mean, so many things, fasting, ketosis, supplement formulation, ergogens. I mean, he's brilliant. Um, but you know, the book, why it's so good and why it's so boomy is because as you know, um, you know, we talked off air and stuff like that, um, consciousness, integration of trauma, you know, soul level stuff. And you're writing about that in the book. And I thought you did just a phenomenal job and that's really all that matters, but talk a little bit about before we jump into the bullet points and stuff like that. And by the way, this podcast at the end, will share Sean's uh, 
top 12 hacks from the book and then also his favorite supplements, which you should all be listening to. But, you know, talk a little bit about the book, Sean. Yeah, so it's called the Energy Formula, and it's an acronym for uh, Experiment, Nutrition, Exercise, Routines, Growth, and Your Tribe. And like you're talking about, there's kind of two through lines uh, with all of these uh, biohacking related chapters is consciousness, which I've really shifted into over the last year and a half. And then two is resilience, which I think is a discussion that's that's needed now more than ever. Uh, and I get into what resilience means in this book with being harder to kill, being uh, having a greater allostatic load, which means like the size of your stress bucket and um, what it means to be in states of ease and not states of dis-ease, but finding hormetic stressors. So it's like states of ease, but then periods of discomfort. Right. And that's, that's the way that like a lot of the time, like we're in states of chronic discomfort and chronic dis-ease and our stress bucket is overflowing and our allostatic load is, is maxed out. And that's something that I address uh, in the book because this is a discussion that's, that's needed right now because many people uh, are, are waning with their health waning with their uh, mental health, not just physical health. And so uh, I think the pandemic, if you wanna call it that, has, has brought that into uh, full attention um, where you know, people are, are fearful, they're worried about their health. Yeah. And, uh, and I wanted to really do a, a deep dive on what resilience means because we're, we're much easier to kill than we used to be. Right, yeah. I mean, it's true. And uh, so I, you know, I, like I said, your book for people um, who are watching this podcast, when this comes out, the book will be hopefully obviously in the marketplace and you'll be able to go to on Amazon and I probably recommend that you do and go buy it. There's full of all sorts of information. And it's also, which is a good thing in today's day and age, it's written in a way that you can just really pick it up and read any chapter at any spot. You don't have to read it from cover to cover, which is smart man that you wrote the book that way. Cause I always tell people now that like, you know, write your book so that anyone can pick up any chapter at any time. Because as you know, Sean, statistically people don't even read now and today. It's a very sad situation, but uh, you know, they want to watch a course or watch a YouTube video. So the people that will read your book are the same people that read Ben, Gre ben Greenfield's book or my books, or, you know, they want information and they want to analyze and they want to like perfect their life. But the first bullet point that I have for you and I to talk about, of course, is consciousness. And you and I literally, at the same time, made a shift in our lives, you know, to be, you know, who we were known for, to talk about this, right? Which is like, for me, the most important thing on the planet right now is getting people to wake up to the idea that, like, it's all about raising human consciousness, to getting everybody to a point where they can just drop the you know, victimhood or the aspect of like blame and that self-talk of that their negative story or whatever it is. So just talk about that. Like, you know, what made you jump into that transition and now why is it such a vital part of like who you are? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Cause like I, I've been doing biohacking and, and formulation and keto for about 20 years now. Right. Uh, but it's only been about a year and a half that I've learned to love myself and have a oh. solid foundation. And that started with plant medicine, uh, specifically psilocybin with MDMA uh, on facilitated journeys. That's a really important factor. It's not just me messing around with these substances. I had really expert facilitators. Uh, uh, one guy is a nurse and, and the other lady is a therapist. And, you know, it's breath work, it's guided music, it's intention setting, it's facilitation during, uh, it's making sure you're safe and cared for and hydrated. And then, you know, afterwards it's integration for months to come. And this led to just massive shifts in, in my soul and in my heart. Uh, primarily the, the first one was I had spent my whole life because I had a, a difficult childhood. Uh, I grew up with depression and, and even suicidal thoughts. And, and I spent a lot of my life driven for achievement because I thought that's where I'd get love for myself and from others. When I got to this level of 
a body or uh, or money or letters right. after my name or achievements like in, in my career, then I would get love. Then I would love myself. And of course, it was in that order too. Like well, that of someone, course. all these people would love me. Then I would love myself. And it was only once I got in the space and I went my first plant medicine journey, I didn't even know anyone in the room. No one knew me. I didn't give my resume. And within a couple hours, I was in a cuddle puddle on the floor and realizing that, oh my God, like I can just get love and give love. It's this simple. I can just do this. And then I can also just take a left or right turn at any time and not just continue on the path I'm on with my career or anything that I can just chase what makes me happy. Exactly. Those things like sound obvious to say, but until your heart feels them, until the ego construct is broken down, like it's not, it's not real. And we're always projecting that whole thing, like hurt people, hurt people, but we're like, Yes, but it's all things. We're always projecting. We're always projecting our reality. We're projecting our stories. I did a lot of work with Byron Katie's stuff. Sure. I don't know. If, uh, yeah, I anyone, know Byron. Yeah, you go to thework.com. Her stuff is amazing. It literally gets you to see how you're projecting stories all the time. And you're not looking at it from the third person perspective of there's your side, my side, and the truth. And it helps so much to decharge some of these things that we've turned into traumas uh, and these stories that we tell ourselves and, and completely take the charge off those. So that stuff really shifted me to where I spent most of my life using all these biohacks because I had all these autoimmune issues with Epstein-Barr, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, Hashimoto's. I had a brain tumor. I had two discs removed out of my neck. I've had knee surgeries, back hip surgeries, uh, like again, depression, suicidal thoughts. I've had disordered eating, uh, anorexia. I've been morbidly obese. I've had orthorexia. I mean, I have been through it because I had no love for myself and I was right. always trying to find love outside of myself. Sure. Yeah. And, and I certainly was a victim and I was using biohacking to survive. I was always heads down and grinding. And we know grinding is like ultra sympathetic nervous system, <laughs> hyper vigilant and heat and smoke and pieces are breaking off. You don't want to be hustle and grind. You want to be hustle and flow. You want to be in a flow state. The whole point of life should be that you're achieving your purpose and your why. And I was stuck in the grind waiting for someday. And I kept leveling up. I mean, Jay, I have like multiple seven, eight figure businesses. I, I have all the letters after my name. I've been on TV many times, documentaries. I have a book coming out. I'm known as the world's greatest formulator. I have patented ingredients, some of the most popular ones. In the world. And I, up until a year and a half ago, I was still fucking miserable. I really was. I mean, I had moments of joy, like when I'm helping people. And, but I had lots of imposter syndrome, lots of doubt. And, and it wasn't until like really, and thank God for COVID, honestly, that I was supposed to be traveling 300 days last year and literally everything that came my way, I didn't have time to process it. I was just like, if there's a space, put it in. Cause I didn't want to miss the thing that right, exactly level up. The next thing, yeah. Right. So I was always worried that I'm going to miss out on the thing, the FOMO. And so just put it in there. I'll somehow make it work. And my body was always breaking down. And so I knew all the biohacks, trust me. Yeah. Like, it's not like I'm some failure because my body is breaking down. No, I knew all the bio, I, I'm a success because I'm alive. Right. I was grinding the hell out of my body and I knew all the things to do. I was doing the workouts, the high intensity interval training, the cold plunges, the supplements, the keto, the intermittent fasting, the, I was doing all of these things, peptides and all the things I, I know how to do to live. But now I have a solid foundation of self-love, of grace, of ease. And now I'm stacking these optimizations on top of that in a way that makes sense. It's not like a sinking sand that I'm trying to build all these things on anymore. I can end the podcast right there, bro, because I have so much love in my heart for you for everything you just said. I mean, look, dude, all of us 
are playing the same game and fighting the same battle. Like none of us in the health and fitness and the bro and the supplement formulation, all we're all the same. I mean, it's all about like love and trust of self. And how do I get to a place where I'm completely not, as you said, you know, chasing something else, the 300 days of like, I'll just get there, you know, next thing's coming. It's like, you know, how do you, and you've done it now, and I'm working on it myself to get to a place where you're just being. And when you're just being, you're actually enjoying just being. I mean, I literally now, if I told you, you know, reading your book, which I broke my code, but I just sit in my spa, my, my infrared sauna, and I just be. And I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm not looking at my phone. You know, I'm not thinking about what comes next. I'm literally just being. And I mean, I mean, look, dude, we could go so many ways with this, with this, because you just said so much profound stuff. I mean, you know, we both play the same game, you know, for me, that, well, listen, yeah. man, for me, it was like, you know, I wanted the credibility of the doctors. I'm not a doctor, but I'm in this space of writing these amazing books about hormonal optimization and all the other things that I wrote about, you know, similar things that you write about. And, and it was like, how can people look at me differently? You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not enough. So, I mean, like, it's the same game and it's, it's, I'm, I'm so happy for you, man. I mean, it's, it's amazing, you know, through obviously the plant and the amplification of like, you know, what you received by going down that path. And I know the people that, you know, have been facilitators with you and, you know, we're, we're the same people. I mean, we don't have to mention their names, amazing, loving human beings, but it's, uh, it's just awesome, man. I mean, I, like I said, I'm just profoundly inspired just listening to you and all the things that you just said right there. Cause that's what matters. It's like getting to the truth. And actually being okay with the truth as it is and not having to, again, climb, you know? Oh, hundred percent. And it's so true. One of the realizations I've had as well is that to your point, I've spent my whole life doing, and that's like, that's that achievement thing. Like I thought happiness came when I could achieve a certain level of house, car, uh, those kinds of things. And then that uh, sexy came when you like achieve a certain level of muscle or fat yeah. or weight that uh, success came with a certain amount of money. Those are all states of being that you can just simply be right now. You can right. be happy, successful, sexy right now. And I'm sure you know people right now that you can think of, oh yeah, that is a guy that's happy. That is a girl that's sexy despite being 300 pounds. That, that is a guy that's super successful despite being at 50 grand a year. Like that guy's dialed in and he's got it figured out and he's on his way. I mean, and they're all states of mind. They're all ways of being. And to your point, that's that's been a powerful shift for me is moving into that being space over doing. And I think right now more than ever we've been in an ultra masculinized world where yes doing is what matters and you know doing tends to be associated with with masculine energy and being more feminine energy and trust me there's nothing wrong with masculine energy we need plenty of it but with capitalism with the news with insecurity with manipulation like all the stuff that we're getting we're, we're being driven to buy, to achieve, to work more, to get more dollars to spend, to be plugged into our phones and into our TVs in such a way that's just ultra masculinized. And we're not spending time with deep connection, presence, healing each other in ways that would really make a lot of the stuff we're buying unnecessary in yeah. healthcare in cars, in houses, in restaurants, like a lot of the stuff that we're doing or we're out there buying is because of that, that missing piece, because we're not being, because we don't have enough of that healing feminine energy right now. Yeah. It's missing. I mean, you're right. I mean, like I said, I could go so many different ways with you. Um, a person has to get to a level of being this, not thinking and thinking and doing this, which is what, you know, guys like you and I are fighting that war, you know, like I'm not doing enough. I can do more. You know, I should be creating this. I should be creating that. It's, you really do have to get to a level of like, I'm perfectly acceptable 
healthy, whole, and complete as I am. You know, it's the whole I am presence. To you, though, um, what was the, what really made you, or, or, or give us some strategies like how you overcame your trauma? Because clearly, dude, you are a totally different person. As am I. I mean, again, you know, we met three years ago. I paid you, or I was part of a group that paid you for your expertise to come in and both of us are completely transformed since then. And it's awesome to see. And I mean, listening to you, like I said, you just melted my heart. Um, what, 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 give us some strategies on how you've overcome this and like how other people watching this can overcome their trauma. Because Sean, everyone has to overcome their trauma to truly advance as a human being. Again, the, the, the foundational pieces, I mean, I can get into like the cold plunges and polyphenols and NAD levels and mitochondria and all that stuff and all that's covered in the book. Yep. But if we're getting to like foundational pieces yeah. uh, and, and really the book kind of goes in that direction, it starts like the most hardcore with like experiment, you know, going into epigenetics and testing right. and, and then it gets into like, you know, keto, paleo and carnivore and then it gets into uh intermittent fast or sorry uh high intensity interval training and blood flow restriction and intraset stretching and all that with exercise routines with circadian rhythm but then like as we get into like towards the end like growth which is like the stoic mindset the resilient mindset uh, and then getting into your tribe which is the power of community and connection like that's where like it's, it's like, I wanted to, to be like, you're talking about like a biohacking book where people, you know, are getting what they want, but then by the end, finding what they need. What, exactly. What's it's important. pulling it, it's pulling it all together so that you see what the, the through line is like all the technical stuff is there, all the supplements, all the data, all this and that, but it's important. Like this, your tribe is, is where it finishes. And if you look at the greatest study of all time, the Harvard study, that's over 80 years running now, the number one determinant of longevity, and this is with generations, thousands of people, they looked at cholesterol levels. They looked at, uh, you know, all the epigenetics, they looked at, uh, socioeconomic status and, and age and all the things like, uh, ge geography, the number one determinant of longevity was quality of relationships. And then if you look at the blue zones with the super centenarians in places like Sardinia that I've been three times, it's the same thing. It's the quality of connection. It's the tribe. It's the community. When I had dinner there, it was a two to three hour meal with several rounds of food. And there's a psychosomatic anchor that's really important. Like, yes, there's Mediterranean food and red wine that's really good, that's high in polyphenols and all that kind of stuff. And yes, there's, there's people around the table that really matter. But one cool thing that happens with your body, this psychosomatic anchor is that when you're eating food, the food triggers parasympathetic nervous system because you're in a relaxed state around right. people you love that are caring for you. What's interesting, and, and I think a lot more research needs to be done in this area because we get caught up in the quality of the food as we should, but here in America, I think there's times when we're eating quality food, even super healthy food, broccoli and all these different things, but because there's a psychosomatic anchor to stress with us you know, getting it from vending machines, convenience stores, uh, you know, standing up while we're eating, watching TV, uh, being in our car while we're eating, being rushed on a lunch break, you know, uh, rushing through a line at a Chipotle or whatever it is, like almost all the times we're eating, we're rushed and we feel busy. And it might be even under stress. And so that becomes a, a psychosomatic anchor for the sympathetic nervous system and potentially inflammation, and you, even if it's healthy food. So it's like, for me, like when I went to Sardinia, I was eating like 6,000 calories. And I, I'm not exaggerating because like yeah. some of these, these people were so like cool. having me and they wanted me to eat like 10 rounds of, and you have to try everything. Yeah. So I was eating like 6,000 calories a day for like two weeks. I thought I was going to gain tons of weight. I lost a pound. Yeah, and exactly. by the way, I was keto and I was eating tons of carbs. Right. 
but meanwhile, I was getting phenomenal sleep. I felt that I was cared for, that I was loved, that I was having deep connection and I was, you know, enjoying walks. My cortisol was just super low. I was parasympathetic. I was relaxed. And so it's, that's a huge difference, but I think those, those are key pieces is, is the community and connection that you have. And then also one of the other big ones is that you have purpose mm -hmm. and that's, you need to like Simon Sinek's book, start with your why, like having your why living your purpose, having your passion, like it makes all the difference that saying that, like, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Like, it's so true. And you see when yeah. people retire, that they get old and they die. Right. And it's not because they're quote unquote old. It's because they retired. Lack purpose now. It's because they didn't have the purpose. So you need that. You need the purpose. You need the connection. Those are critical. I mean, as that saying goes the Jim Rohn, like you're the product of the five people uh, closest to you. And it's true. So like, are you consciously choosing those five people around you? Are they just random people like a neighbor, a family member, or someone at work? Or are they people that you're like, this guy's an incredible mentor because he's what I want to be spiritually. He's what I want to be uh, in business. He's what I want to be in terms of generosity. And these are the five people I have around me because they're all going to help me level up. And I'm helping them level up. I'm giving them my value as well. Beautiful. It's always reciprocity. You know, that's the way I look at it. You know, you working with, you know, you and I are around the same age. I think our... Are you 71? What year were you born? 74. Okay, so you're a little younger than me. Um, but we're a similar age. I mean, you know, I just turned mm -hmm. 50 or 47, whatever, maybe about, about 48. But, uh, you know, I, I strategically and specifically look for, you know, guys. It doesn't have to be, you know, people, but like, you know, guys that have been down the same path and are just a little bit older. And I really love to take mentorship for them. But that's that's the important thing is like, it is, like you said, it's always reciprocal because whatever we can learn from them, they're also learning from us. So it's just that whole human, you know, energetic collective of like, you know, I benefit, you benefit. And that's where we have to get everywhere. I mean, get everybody to where, again, people just drop their story. You know, if I can just use the hawk and scale, which I like to do, you know, there's just too many people still not taking ownership for who they are. You know, and as yeah. you know, technology and social media and just this narrative, I call it the human central computer, allows people to never take ownership. And then, you know, the central computer says, oh, yeah, it's great. You know, it's so-and-so's fault. And then people just, as you know, they just play a never-ending cascade of not my fault. I'm going to take ownership for it. Yeah, not not only are you always pushing out like everything externally and, and not taking responsibility for it, but what really sucks about that is you'll never truly level up. You'll never feel like you do own this life that you that you're truly proud of yourself that you right. are accomplished. You're always seeking when you're blaming externally, you're also seeking validation externally. Right. And That's like exactly when you right. take responsibility for your actions then you can also uh, take pride in your actions. Right. You know, like it's, it's, that's a huge shift for sure. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing that when you finally, you know, become personally accountable and personally responsible for every single thing, you know, with my daughter, you know, I have three, I have two daughters, well, they're three, a bonus daughter, but she's in college now as a freshman and my biologicals are 13 and 11 and my 13 year old is totally accountable. And my 11 year old is completely not. And, you know, they've been raised the same way. Um, but it's just, you know, I always tell the 11 year old, you know, I hate using this word because it's a terrible word, like to say, you know, fault, you know, and there's better, more strategic words I can use. But with her, I say everything is your fault because I want her to actually, you know, recognize ultimately that everything that happens to you is based on your choices that you've made. And, when you think of it in your 11 year old terms right now, um, you know, negatively reinforcing that you will eventually make it positively reinforcing by saying, oh, you know, well, my dad always just told me that everything that happens to me is, you know, my fault. You know, so now I'm going to think of it energetically, you know, from a positive standpoint of like, then I have to take ownership. 
And it's just strange how so many people, and again, as you just said, you know, society positively reinforces not taking ownership. And I, and I, you know, we could go in a lot of different ways with that, right? Because yeah, like for sure. the people that are running things right now, assuming they yep. really are people, want um, universal basic income and, you know, want people to not be accountable and want people to be uh, servile and compliant and just follow, you know, go along, get along. So, I mean, like, that's a whole other conversation, but. Uh, it's, there, it's, there's it's, a quote about uh, a government big enough to take care of you is a government big enough to control you. Exactly. And that's, I mean, I don't want to veer this conversation off that path, but that's exactly what's happening right now. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with US Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. The boilerplate, the acronym for energy is experimentation, nutrition, exercise, routines, growth in your tribe. Yeah, um, you can talk a little bit about that if you want now, but I really like the idea of talking about your tribe as it kind of relates to what you and I are just talking about right now. There's clearly a bifurcation that is happening yeah. right now on this planet. Talk about that. Uh, it's, a, it's a great point. It's something that I've uh, actually talked to uh, Keith Norris, who's a friend of mine, uh, deeply about who is uh, one of the founders of Paleo FX, um, super conscious guy. Uh, down in Austin, love him. And uh, we've been talking about this, the the bifurcation, the, the split that's happened in society where, I mean, first off, we're also forced almost at time to be in two boxes of yeah. racist, not racist, Trump, not Trump, Biden, not Biden, uh, conservative, liberal, uh, Democrat, Republican, uh, white, not white, Christian, not Christian. It's like... Our, this is insane. Like, like you were saying at the beginning, we're all so similar. We're 99.99% similar. And what makes us different is what makes us beautiful. Exactly. But everyone's here trying to be happy, be successful, be sexy, enjoy their life, right? Like, I mean, we're, we all have that in common. We have so much in common. It's clear why we're divided. And again, that gets into a very deep uh, discussion and, and there's means of control uh, that's that's happening with that. But with this bifurcation, we're seeing people go two directions, like with such an extreme um, bellwether, if you will, that happened of the quote unquote pandemic or COVID-19 and, and all the things that ensued in that election year uh, is people that are getting fearful, angry, scared, like just uh, isolated, um, accusatory, uh, tuned into all the, the media and dependent on the media, dependent on the government checks, dependent on, on what CNN is telling me and all those kinds of things. And then there's people that are like, fuck the news, right. you know, screw all this stuff, like awakening, like I'm going to like, I now appreciate people around me more. I'm going to be more loving. I'm going to seek consciousness. I'm going right. to look into plant medicine. What's that about? Like do a deeper dive there. I'm going to do therapy, do self-care. Like I feel there's an awakening, like that's, that's sending me in a different path. Like I see all the angry, scared people there. And right. it's like, that's just not for me. Right. You know, I'm not going to buy into any of that stuff. And so the, the bifurcation is, is clearly real. And I do believe like that there is uh, an interesting theory was given to me that like there's always like a yin and yang like there's there's a there's a balance if you will of yeah. this of, of this energy and there's been points in our history not too long ago when people were just kind of all in the middle right. like there wasn't much fear and anger and and division and control but there also wasn't the awakening the consciousness the the growth 
And so now we're in a period of time where there's still a balance, but that means like some of the culture is really waking up right now, big time, like more than maybe ever in, in a, in a long time, at least that I know of, like even more so than like the seventies or different periods like that. Um, And so there's still a balance, you know, ultimately, and, and you hope that the awakening like shows some of those people uh, on that bifurcated path, like there is a better way and, and they might, you know, get fed up, get sick of being sick, get tired of being tired, get tired of, of getting manipulated and then switch over to the other side of the path. And, and I think that's going to be happening. Like there's some of us that are, that are kind of leading the way that I, I think had maybe like our past was filled with difficulty. You know, we had enough trauma. So like, right. We're, we, we don't even have like our bucket overflowed like one minute into this crap, you know, but some people like, you know, it's, it's their, their bucket needs to fill up and, and maybe they're going to hit enough is enough and, and they're going to come over to the awakened side, I hope, but it's, it's an interesting time for sure. Beautiful. There's just fear and love. The bifurcation is, you know, the awakened, if you want to call it that, are people that are living in residence. And the people that are not awakened, again, you called it, you know, fear, you know, people watching the, the television, you know, standing in line for the vaccine, you know, wearing triple masks, whatever, that dissonance. So it's like, you know, if we just really summarize this very clear cut and dry, we could even go into the ancient texts. And, you know, I'm not bringing in religion to this, but the ancient texts talked about the wheat and the tares, Okay. And that at the end of the days, whatever that would be, and again, I'm not saying this is the end of humanity and time, but like, you know, a lot of things are metaphorical and allegorical, but that's what's happening, Sean. Your, your people are either living in resonance or living in dissonance. And guess what? You as a sovereign souled being get to choose. So are you going to be yeah. down here or are you going to be up here serving other people? In enjoyment, being, you know, embracing being. I mean, it's it's really simple to me. I mean, I, you know, I know make people really make it difficult due to trauma, uh, you know, due to victimization, due to whatever they've chosen at a soul level for you know growth and evolution here. But I mean, if you really just break it down, and you've done an amazing job in this podcast, um, it really just comes down to: do you choose love or do you choose fear? Yeah, and that's actually um, a philosopher and psychologist, I believe, um, Elizabeth Kubler Ross, uh, yeah. that came up with that. Like that, there's there's two emotions, fear and love, and it's really like it is profound. Like you might be like, well, no, there's hate, there's this, there's that, and it's like they really fit in those. Uh, either one of those, it's it's fascinating. Um, it's it makes things very clear. But I agree, it's funny you you brought up the word sovereignty. And that's, that is a powerful, powerful word. Like you can be the king of your own existence and that's really, or queen, uh, you can uh, really own it. And that's, that's the opposite side of the victimization that we're talking about when you have uh, the power over, over what's happening in your life, when you can take control of what your life is and how you're going to define it and what that looks like, what you're going to be and what you're going to do sovereignty is is massive and so many people are giving it away and i think one of the most profound forms of self-love that i've discovered is setting boundaries exactly it's exactly. setting boundaries because you're you're telling your body hey body i got your back your body is going through inflammation through pain through disease all the time because you're giving your sovereignty away you're not living your truth and you're giving your energy away when you keep putting yourself in situations that are counterproductive to you because you don't want to speak up. You don't want to be a problem. Those are issues that are literally killing you. And when you take that power back, when you are sovereign over your existence, when you do set boundaries and say, hey, body, I, I got you. Like, this doesn't feel right. This isn't right for me. I'm letting them know, or even better is when you say at the beginning of the outset of any relationship, especially in a business, 
these are the rules, these are the parameters we're going to work by. I just want to make this clear now. Your body gets to relax, be right. more parasympathetic. You get to be more instead of worry, worrying about doing and being caught up in sympathetic nervous system. All that stuff is killing you by not owning your truth, by not living in integrity, by not setting boundaries. Beautiful. I mean, think about all of your diseases, disease body states that you talked about in the early part of the show, all the physical maladies that you experience in your life and all of that from a psycho-spiritual level or a psychogenic level, you know now that if you are who you are now, you probably wouldn't even have the majority of those things, right? Because you were not enough. 100%. Yeah, you were not enough. And not being enough. So, you know, let's go like warrior sage, ancient wisdom now, right? Like we now know through quantum physics that we create our reality, right? Our words, our thoughts, our actions, right? So at, at the end of the day, when we can really look at this, like you said, with deep the truth and we know that the way we acted when we didn't love and trust ourselves which you and i both lived the majority of our life in that capacity we created the state of our conscious being sick dissonant victim whatever right so it's like the spirit is really what's inhabiting these physical avatar bodies right and so it's like if the spirit is amputated or traumatized then yes, disease this comes next, right? Because as you know, you know, being a scientist, the cellular, you know, information that eventually leads to the degradation and then ultimately to the diseases of aging all comes from a spirit that doesn't love and trust itself in a physical body. Because at perfect soul essence, we do. We're, we are love. So it's crazy how people create the actual physical, you know, malady or physical state of their conscious being through their lifestyle and through, like you said, their epigenetic factors. And, and if people could just take ownership of that, Sean, but again, you know, as you know, a lot of people run to allopathic medicine and they want a diagnosis and the insurance industry loves to give the diagnosis because the doctor gets paid and big pharma gets a script and it just, you know, on and on it goes. But I mean, if people just would recognize the amazing things that you and I have shared on this podcast today, they wouldn't even go to the doctor anymore unless you were shot with a machine gun, you know, and you're bleeding out or you were in a bad, tragic accident and need some sort of surgery. But it's, it's mind-blowing how much we create through our words, thoughts, and actions. And when they're negative and not loving and not trusting himself, everything is, you know, ultimately negative. Right. And states of disease can be temporary and be undone. Like cool. we can heal and get back to our true selves, our whole selves, and not be in these states of disease. But when we get labeled through allopathic medicine as diabetic or right. Alzheimer's or right. this or that, then like that becomes our identity. Just like, exactly, dude. like you know, being labeled an alcoholic or, you know, something like that, like that becomes your identity. And then it be it becomes so difficult to be anything but that. You're always seeking to fix that for the rest of your life through the medication, through the therapy, et cetera. Instead of thinking this is a, a temporary state of dis-ease, when I resolve this dis-ease by moving into states of ease, by having sovereignty, by healing my body with the with what it needs, which is sunshine, which is uh, fresh air, which is grounding underneath your feet, which is exchanging microbiomes with other people, which is hugs and connection right. and purpose and water and pets and <laughs> all right. these things that we should have, then you cannot be diseased anymore. So amazing, bro. Okay, so last 10 minutes or so, I want you to share. Dawn's top supplements. And then, you know, we'll talk a little bit about hacks. I mean, I have them all in front of me right now. Um, you don't have to go through each one. I'll, I'll list them. You have uh, vitamin D3 plus K2, uh, dihydro, berberin, and berberin. Um, I want you to talk on that. Collagen, magnesium, high bioavailability, magnesium, ashwagandha, and rhodiola, two amazing supplements. Uh, a high quality multivitamin with active B, of course. Um, 
spell ergotheanine. Did I spell it? Thionine. I think I spelled yep. it in that round. Uh, Alpha GPC, creatine, uh, curcumin, IDHA fish oil, prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics, which are symbiotics. So of all 12 of those, and again, you know, obviously, again, recommend to people when they listen to this podcast, they rush to the store. I mean, actually, they don't have to rush to the store. They just go on Amazon. But yeah. uh, you know, buy this book because it's amazing stuff in there. But of those 12 things, like what did you want to specifically talk about? Right now? Yeah, uh, a couple of them. Um, uh, the dihydroberberine, which is, so most people know in anti-aging, metformin, it's been shown to potentially extend life by uh, upwards of two years. There's a study going on right now with over 3,000 people exploring this. So it's definitely uh, something that's been legitimized in science pretty heavily as a glucose disposal agent and not for just di diabetics, but certainly yeah. if you are insulin resistant, this could be your best friend. The problem with metformin is there's been GI distress, it's been tainted, it depletes B12, it's not the most ideal thing. There's berberine, which is the botanical equivalent uh, of metformin and actually has been shown in the study to be uh, superior on several fronts to metformin uh, when, when compared head to head. But then dihydroberberine is the form that I patented that in your body, um, berberine converts to dihydroberberine. And so it's about anywhere from like five to even upwards of 20 times more bioavailable. So you can take much lower doses and then it lasts about twice as long in the plasma. So you have to take it less frequently. And as far as we know, this is the most powerful anti-aging compound. I mean, there's some peptides coming out. I know, you know, uh, that are very interesting, but from the data that we have, this is one of the most powerful paths for anti-aging. You literally have advanced glycation end products called ages right. and glycation blood sugar damage can lead to inflammation and dyslipidemia and nearly all disease states and then insufficient cellular energy states with mitochondrial dysfunction and all this stuff. And so, and, and lower testosterone and it just goes on and on and on. So this can help uh, reset your, your, your path of, of metabolic dysfunction, of insulin resistance, of, of pro-aging and pro-disease. It's the most powerful compound I think that you can take right now. And then um, a couple other compounds that are really cool, um, L-BABA, which I mentioned on Ben Greenfield, I didn't mention here, as I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it's a, it's an exercise mimetic. And I think, you know, like a car and GW 50156, sure. this is one that occurs naturally in the body when your body's breaking down uh, the muscle pool of amino acids and uh, BCAs are a large part of that. And l valine is a BCAA. l valine gets converted to l -beba, beta amino isobutyric acid. And l -beba is a signal to the body that there's intense exercise going on. And from there, almost everything associated with intense exercise is associated with uh, elevated plasma beta levels. So improve VO2 max, improve uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor and, and neuroplasticity, uh, improved um, fatty acid utilization for fuel and glucose utilization and glycogen storage, uh, improved um, uh, muscle mass and strength. Uh, improved bone mineral density. It's amazing. So it's literally like a, a holy grail, if you will, if you will. And we've shown that when you orally supplement with beta, it does raise plasma beta levels. And we have several studies going on right now that will show that enhanced uh, all these enhanced exercise benefits that come with beta. So really cool ingredient. Maybe like one more that's that's a fun one is uh, is grains of paradise. Um, standardized for six paradol. Uh, it's a uh, African spice. Uh, it's actually great on food. It's kind of ginger peppery uh, and really tasty. Is this so the one that Ben was talking about where it increases brown adipose yep. tissue? That's it. That's yeah. it. So it does. It, it upregulates uh, brown adipose tissue um, activity and increases brown adipose tissue number. And this could be, speaking of holy grails, like one of the reasons that some people can seemingly eat a lot more, but, but sure, not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So brown adipose tissue is a really unique fat. So adipose tissue is fat. Most of our fat in our body is white adipose tissue. 
and brown adipose tissue is mostly around your clavicle, your collarbone, right. Right here. and it's meant to be thermogenic and keep you warm when exactly. you need, especially when you're a baby and you lack the ability to shiver like the first six, seven, eight, uh, nine months. And so uh, they've also found that cold thermogenesis increases brown adipose tissue uh, activity. Exactly. So like jumping and you know, doing cold yeah, plunges, yeah. cold showers, yeah, all that stuff. So these two may have a uh, synergy. And what's really cool, only 40 milligrams we found uh, burns over a hundred calories uh, as a non-stimulant. So we don't know that if you take 80 or 80 twice a day, like what does that equal? Is that 400 calories or like, it's, it's really interesting. Uh, so we don't know yet, but it does seem to be a powerful compound. And I, and I do believe it has potent synergy with- Come on, where are you doing it? <laughs> well, um, you know, all of these things, um, are available like in products. Um, there's, there's several like I mean, alpha lines. Really haven't developed a proprietary formulation yet. And like, no, no. <laughs> well, they're, they're available as branded ingredients through NNB, uh, which is a, a partner that I've worked with. Um, but like companies, like if you just want the products, like alpha lion is one that comes to the top of my mind. Uh, Genius Formulations makes a blood sugar product that has dihydroberberine that I'm a huge fan of. Um, so those are a couple companies. Uh, Man Sports uh, makes a Beba that's really good. So those How are do you some spell companies. Beba? Uh, B-A-I-B-A. And of course, all this stuff is in the book. Uh, if you go to energyformula.com, uh, I'll be doing two oh, live. We're not, we're not done with this yet, dude. You're just getting started. Um, that, that comes at the end when you put all this stuff. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah, hold on. Fine. Guys, that was amazing stuff. Um, Dave, uh, well, all the supplements we talk about, but we'll, we'll, I'll let you talk about before then. Okay. So I want to end the show with the top 12 hacks from the book, which I think are all amazing. I'm going to read them out and I'm going to stress the ones that I want you to comment on. Um, okay. Sleep hygiene is the most underrated underappreciated thing in the world like majority of people as you said and we both kind of went back and forth earlier today are literally trying to biohack their fucking sleep which is the dumbest possible thing that a person can do create a strong morning routine i mean if you're going to be a conscious being again and you are just going to learn to be you have to have a morning routine i love this you have batching tasks that is massively underappreciated and underutilized in today's day and age, especially for people who are grinding, Sean. Yeah. Hot and cold, take hot and cold showers and go into saunas and cold plunges to build resilience. Again, amazing. I mean, I literally live with my infrared sauna now. It's the best, one of the best biohacking things I've ever experienced. And I have them all, you know, I'm like Ben, you know, everything's in my house. They send me shit. Um, experiment with one thing at a time. Huge. Because so many people are literally trying to use everything on. And like you said, bio-individuality, right? So I'm going to let you talk about all these things in a second. Exercise regularly, duh. Paleo and keto. So, you know, me, you know, I like Ben, you know, Benjamin Brown, you know, you know, it, it was really Polkwin, you know, metabolic flexibility. But, you know, mm -hmm. um. Regulating blood glucose, which you're all about, I'm all about, um, you know, suppressing insulin, keeping those chemoreceptors functional and viable for as long as you can in your life is massive. So obviously paleo and keto, both great. Again, regulate blood sugar, eat natural foods, organic foods as much as possible. Uh, and then the rest that you have, and again, I'm gonna let you comment on all these things is you have what is tested is tracked, right? Get metrics. Um, surround yourself with a dream team, which you kind of already talked about with mentors, develop deep relationships, which is amazing and huge and very important, uh, and, and much harder now with COVID. And, you know, I mean, it's actually probably easier if you can count a relationship like this, but you and I both know you need to meet in person. You need to, like you said, develop the microbiome, huddle, huddle, hug, embrace, um, adversity, build strength. Again, challenges every every collapse, failure, or debacle is an opportunity for growth and evolution. And then the last one, and then most important, as you said, of course, is to love your love and trust yourself. So, of all of those things, you know, talk about any of them. Mm. 
Wow. Um, man, uh, definitely the, the last one, like I said, like that is foundational and it, and some people might get caught up in that sounding woo, uh, you know, and, and I grew up that way, you know, I grew up with like Rambo and Arnold and, you know, like suppress it and win. And we called each other gay and some girl all, all that stuff all the time. And like, don't be a girl and, you know, be a real man and, you know, crying for, you know, pussies and all this kind of stuff right. that we were taught. And um, <laughs> it, it's so ironic that like, you know, I've spent the rest of my life trying to figure out like something so basic, so fundamental is just loving myself is like how simple that is and how much of a massive shift and enjoying your life and in, and having real health span over lifespan, which I get into in the book, like the term health span means living without disease, like real quality of life. Like how long is that span? Like a lot of people live long lifespans, but have very poor health spans. Right. Right. And so, you know, this is about quality of life and it's about impacting those around you. It's about living your purpose, living your why. It's about having that vibrant resilience. And you can only have that, that massive stress bucket, that allostatic load, that resilience when you are uh, living your passion, when you're connected, when you're loving yourself. Like it sounds so crazy but it's not through peptides it's not these people that are super centenarians that are living in these blue zones they're not doing it with enemas peptides and exosomes i mean all that stuff's cool but they're living past 100 because they love themselves yeah. they feel cared for and connected and they have purpose yes yes and yes they're slowing down and having good food and they're not distracted and they're mindful and they're present because that's part of loving yourself, again, is setting boundaries and being being present, being present, not only for the people around you, but being present for yourself, being connected to yourself, not being worried about talking to yourself. How scared are you to talk to yourself? Because that inner voice, most of the time, for most people, if anyone talked to you like you talked to you, you wouldn't be their friend. Right, right. And we're we're literally putting out there we're telling people, here's how you treat me, because here's how I treat myself. And we treat ourselves like crap. We don't grant ourselves any grace. We don't have any ease on ourselves. We're literally beating ourselves down with the inner critic instead of the inner champion. And that makes just such a massive difference when we're present for ourselves, when we're doing gratitude and when we're doing affirmations and we do have that inner champion and we are the voice of encouragement to ourselves. That makes all the difference. That goes back to that sovereignty. Stop waiting for the savior to walk through the door, whether it's, you know, Mr. Right, if you're a girl or whether it's the friend or whether it's the new boss that gives you all this money or that TV show or this podcast that'll make you famous or whatever it is, you have sovereignty live your life now don't hold off and wait for something else to come through that door be your own best advocate be your own boss be your own lover be your own friend be your own mentor be your own father be your own brother like be those things to yourself so you can be those things for other people and truly show up i mean bro this has been a profound podcast I really can't don't even want to go anywhere beyond that um you know, I, I mean, I want to say like, you know, so much is externalized, you know, I would even say religion. I mean, think of all the religious teachings about people think that the savior is out there and everything starts within, dude, you know, that, you know, you just said it, you just made it in a very elegantly and eloquently way to understand that everything starts with self-examination, you know, recognizing that everything you need is already inside you everything you know but again it's getting to that point of recognition where you are enough you do love and trust yourself and like you said you're sexy and all these other things just because you claim it to be that way and you have to get as a being a conscious being you have to get to a place where you can actually say that and not have what i call the drunk monkey you know screaming in your ear that you're not enough and, and, and you know as you said and you know, I admit too, you know, for a good 40 plus years of both of our lives, bro, we were not enough. 
I mean, we both have all these accolades and all these things and done all these things and have, you know, been on all these shows. And like you said, you know, had all these notches in our belts and they were all fucking me meaningless, dude. I mean, because we didn't love and trust ourselves. It was always to the next thing. Like you said, I mean, I love that. You know, I was traveling 300 days in 2020 and it didn't matter because you had to be there. FOMO. And it's like, no, you know, you can be, by the way, I wanted to say one thing and I want you to react to it. And then you can tell people how to obviously get the book and how to connect with you and work with you and all that stuff. But, you know, you said, um, people are so caught up in not being able to say no, you know, doing and being, I mean, doing and thinking and thinking and doing and, and not being able like to really consciously set boundaries, you know, which is what you said. And it's like, especially in our camp, right? Like the entrepreneur, the, you know, the people that are making it happen, like everybody is too afraid to say no, dude, and guard your preservation of being this. And it's like, you know, you want to say yes, because you want to say yes. And it's the right thing to do because somebody wants you to work with you or they want to partner with you or they want to do this or they want to do that. And it's like, until you learn, again, sovereignty of yourself, dude, it's so easy to say yes. And then that's how people burn out too. So just, you know, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I just took a, a week long NLP course uh, that really made it clear to me how much we're getting programmed and oh. it's, it's really helpful to also um, to understand what we're putting out there in terms of our words and, and how we can uh, battle all this, all this programming and reframing that's, that's coming our way that literally they call them yes sets, like where like they'll, they'll make you say yes a series of times and then they'll you know, throw something at you that's difficult or expensive and then you're forced to say yes. I mean, we are being programmed at mm -hmm. all times by all many different capacities. I mean, even our cell phones, behavioral targeting. I mean, you already know this, right? Like you could be talking and all of a sudden you look down and your phone is recording your conversation. Oh my God. Yeah, big time. You know, uh, and something that you brought up before, yeah. like I love this one quote by um, Jim Carrey uh, is that, and he got super spiritual and conscious uh, he said, I wish everyone could be rich and famous once so they could see that's not the answer. Exactly. exactly. And that's exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's not about that stuff. It's, it's really about, uh, you know, finding your purpose, finding your why, finding your tribe and living, living a, a life worth living and loving yourself. I mean, that's, that's all it comes down to all this stuff. Like think about like all the stuff that you want and what's the ultimate end goal of that stuff. Why do you want that stuff? Or why do you want that hot girl? Or why do you want this or that? Like the Lamborghini. It's so that you can feel important, so that you can feel loved. All that stuff you can have right now. You can just choose it right now. You don't need the stuff. Exactly right. I mean, if you've read any of the works of Neville Goddard, it's just claim what you want to be and be it. It's just right now. It doesn't matter your money, your limitations, you know, again, looking. But I mean, it's you already said it, dude, and then the show, but, you know, it's programming. We've been programmed since birth, you know, and you have to overcome the programming, the externalization, as you said, that everyone is birthed into. I mean, think about it. We come into this world in a physical avatar body and our parents give us you know, everything that we are supposed to like inhabit or inherit, you know, religion, belief systems, um, diets, you know, favorite sports teams, favorite. So, I mean, it, 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 the list is endless, dude. So you as a sovereign soul being have to figure out at some point in, in your lifespan that you are subject to those beliefs and those isms you know, and that you have the ability to choose a completely different life. And again, to claim that, you know, as a conscious, sovereign soul, you know, human, you can be anything you want as long as you, you know, hopefully are not being a victim and that you're choosing love as you're guiding, you know, your, your, your pole star. And like, and this has been uh, an incredible conversation and I really appreciate being on the show, Jay. You're, you're freaking awesome. Like I want to hang out with too, you. Brother.
I want to hang out with you more. <laughs> I want to do more together. Oh, we will, dude. Uh, we will. Well, all, people like us now who have walking, who are walking this spiritual path and have chosen consciousness as our way of being now are all aligning. You know, like I told you in the text message earlier this morning when I was reading, you know, finishing your book, I was like, bro, this is completely next level. Um, all right. So phenomenal. Uh, I'm going to put this out like literally the same week or the week after, um, you know, the book is blowing up in the, in the space and it will, I know you're going to do really, really well with this. Um, how can people connect with you obviously purchase the book? Like where do you want to send people? Yeah. Energyformula.com. I have all the bonuses there. So, uh, when you go to Amazon and get the book, which right now, um, through, uh, the end of April will be 99 cents for the ebook for a 400 page, over hundred scientific citation, over 60 full color diagram, uh, there's resource hacks in there with all the tips, techniques, yep. devices, the formulators corners with all the brands, supplements, doses. And this thing is like chock full for 99 cents for the time being. It's going to go up to 9.99 uh, in May. But you also get a fasting for energy guide, which is 25 pages all on fasting, the science behind it, like what your fasting type is, and then a hidden chapter on natural ancestral movement. Uh, and then there'll also be two live Q and A's that you get into with me too. So you get all that for 99 cents. I do have a hard cover for 39.99, but it cost me 39.80 to make it. It's literally right. full color front to back. Nice. Uh, so it's amazing. And then I have an audible coming out fairly soon in the next, uh, in the next month or so. I think it'll, it'll trail behind maybe by about four weeks. And then uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sean Wells, S-H-A-W-N-W-E-L-L-S. And then I've been doing Clubhouse quite a bit lately. And I'm at biohacking on Clubhouse. And uh, I've been doing almost a room every day there. So that's been fun too. That's awesome. Maybe I'll join that room. So I'm going to bring you back and you and I will go and do a deep dive on casting. Awesome. Uh, I think the marketplace deserves that, you know, obviously I'm very, very knowledgeable and learned on all the studies and, you know, the, the metabolic blowtorch diet is still like in the top four fasting books ever on Amazon. So, um, you know, I definitely, I definitely want to do a deep dive on fasting and, you know, let me just say again, um, your book is profound. Every person that follows the Jay Campbell brand and audience and podcast should actually own the book because it's that good of a book. Um, it's not, it's 400 pages, but it's very condensed. He has a lot of graphics in there. There's again, it's like I said, like when you create a book that any person can open at any section and find value and not be like, Oh shit, I got to go back three chapters to understand what he's talking about. That's when you've created an amazing book. So props to you, bro. I'm very proud of you. Uh, I congratulate you on your success. I know this book is going to blow you up now. Like even in the consciousness space is like, you know, you're not just the world's greatest formulator anymore. Now you're going to be like the guy who loves and trusts himself in addition mm -hmm. to all those things. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Um, I love you, man. That's all I can say. Thank I really, you. truly appreciate you. Thank you. I love you too, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. So for all you guys uh, who support the amazing contributors who come on the Jay Campbell podcast, go to, um, this, the energyformula.com pick up his book it's 99 cents when this first comes out uh, i mean i would recommend i mean he doesn't make any money on it but i would recommend the uh hardcover full color and get that book for 40 bucks but uh just remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we will see all of you guys very soon <laughs>